who are a few of the most entitled people. Let's get right to it with... Number six, the classic influencer versus hotel. A Dublin hotel owner banned social media influencers after L. Darby asked to stay at the hotel for free in exchange for publicity. Darby, who had 80,000 followers, outraged Paul Stenson, the owner of Dublin's White Moose Cafe, when she asked for a free stay in exchange for promotional vlogs and Instagram updates. Stenson posted his feelings about the situation on Facebook, asking who would pay the staff that looked after the influencer. He also said that rather than receiving payment, he should just allow staff to be featured in Darby's video instead, demonstrating that he clearly doesn't understand social media. Although Stenson didn't mention Darby by name, he attached a screenshot of her email, the only mature thing he did while handling this. In the email, Darby claimed she stayed for free at Universal Studios, which was a great business decision for the theme park. They were probably suffering until Darby's rescue. Online users identified Darby as the influencer in Stenson's post, prompting her to make a video to explain her side of the story. Darby Dramatics complained about Stenson's cruel treatment and claimed he stole her dreams. Darby said she was embarrassed and humiliated by the whole ordeal. The video received 240,000 views. Members of the blogging community supported her and called out Stenson as being unprofessional. Stenson proved his critics right by posting a spoof video on YouTube that mocked influencers like Darby and gave a false apology. He sarcastically said that he should have thought about influencers more. He then added that the more people speak about the hotel to their followers, the more people would hear about the hotel and its brand demonstrating that he doesn't really understand marketing either. Stenson decided to ban influencers from the business since he was probably inundated with them and their sense of entitlement was too strong. He posted on Facebook that he didn't want to deal with the nastiness and drama of working with bloggers. He further warned that you just can't trust influencers since they'll say anything they're paid to, which is totally different from regular advertising where you can trust everything. There's nothing more special than a grown man bickering with an entitled teenager online over a hotel stay, right? Number five, the DoorDash devil. A DoorDash driver refused to give a man his food when he only tipped her $8 because this queen knows her worth. In ring camera footage, the driver yelled at the man for the low tip after she went on a 12 and a half mile trip to deliver the food. She said he must not have realized how far she went to get the food, which is obviously something he should have been worrying about. The woman explained it took her 40 minutes to drive from Smithtown to Comac, Long Island. The customer said it should have only taken 15 to 20 minutes, needlessly carrying on the argument. Not that we would have been better, but still. always be careful when arguing with an idiot. The woman demanded that he do the drive to see how long it took, which is stupid for a variety of reasons. The guy then said he didn't understand the issue, saying he gave her an $8 tip, which is pretty good. She demanded that he adjust the tip, which he did not. She then threatened to return the food, not thinking how long it would take her to return it, and began to walk away from the doorstep. The man posted the video to YouTube where people slammed the driver. Some called for DoorDash to fire her, and others found her attitude shocking. It seems she must have forgotten that she signed up to be a driver. It's not like the guy called her up asking for a favor. Number four, no easy pickoff. Anthony Bass heavily criticized United Airlines after a flight attendant allegedly made his pregnant wife get on the floor to clean up the mess his young two-year-old daughter made. At the time, Bass played for the Blue Jays and made $3 million in just one season. He had made 73 total appearances in his previous season with the Marlins and Blue Jays and had a 1.5 ERA with 73 strikeouts in 70 and a half innings. If you don't understand baseball stuff, the guy was pretty decent. In his MLB career, he's pitched for the Astros, Padres, Cubs, Mariners, Rangers, and Marlins. Someone with such a high profile was bound to get a lot of attention when he tweeted about how the flight attendant forced his wife to clean up after their daughter. Bass expressed outrage that his pregnant wife, who was traveling with their five and two-year-old kids, had to get on the floor to pick up popcorn after his youngest spilled it. Bass's rant wasn't met with the sympathy he expected. When a user asked him who he expected to clean up his children's mess, he said it should be up to the cleaning crew who are paid to clean the plane when everyone leaves. Another reminded him, since he had so much money, he should have a maid travel with him and his family. The user also also accused him of being the reason why people had to pay more for airline tickets and that he needed to take responsibility and not raise his children to blame others for their mess. It sounds like Bass was fishing for some sympathy, but no one took the bait. Number three, the most deserving. 
Serene Warren took legal action against her estranged family to get more access to their billion dollar fortune. Warren's father, Ken Evestad, bought Upshur Smith Pharmaceutical Company in 1969. Over the years, and with the help of his son Mark, he turned the organization into a $1.1 billion giant. Unlike his children, Evestad had humble beginnings. He trained as a pharmacist before purchasing the pharma firm $1,500. The firm expanded over the years, and its growth accelerated when Evestad's son Mark took over as CEO in 2000. 2004. Mark had quadrupled the company's value by the time the firm sold in 2017. Warren was furious at her brother's earnings from the sale and felt entitled to more money than she received as a result. Three years before the sale in 2014, Evestad rewarded Mark for his hard work by giving him extra stock. Warren thought it was unfair that her brother received the additional stock, but it was just the beginning of the bad blood between the two. Warren eventually cut off all communications with her family in 2016, and by 2017, when the firm sold, she wanted to sell the firm as as well to establish financial independence. Warren had owned 25% of the organization at the time, valued at a quarter of a billion dollars. Despite being a stay-at-home mom and the massive growth the company experienced under Mark's leadership, Warren was furious that her father and brother made over $75 million in bonuses. Although Warren had received over $328 million throughout her life from her parents, she decided to sue her family in 2018 over the bonuses. She argued that the amount her father and brother received reduced the firm's value and her stake in it. And why shouldn't she get more money for the work she did not do and had nothing to do with? An independent auditor disagreed with Warren, finding the bonuses were fair and that, given their impact on the pharmaceutical company, they had been underpaid for years. So Warren entered a five-year legal battle with her father and brother. Even her father battling a terminal illness wasn't enough to make Warren drop the case. This story is all the more heartbreaking because while he was very close with his son, who followed in his father's footsteps, Evestad still very much doted on his daughter Serene. He even named his celebrated vineyard in Oregon and popular tourist destination Domain Serene after her. Tension continued when Evestad passed away in 2020 at the age of 77. Warren lived with her family in a $3 million, five-bedroom, five-bathroom mansion. Her husband Chris hadn't had a job since 2004. Judge Ken Wall highlighted in court that the couple's career decisions meant they didn't have the necessary business skills and knowledge that Mark, Evestad, and Warren's mother, Grace, had. The judge failed to find proof that Warren's estranged family defrauded her, but acknowledged that it was understandable why some decisions caused her frustration. He also pointed out that any disappointment Warren felt over missing out on her massive inheritance and hundreds of millions in shareholder distributions would be due to her decisions during the litigation process. While the family offered her a $150 million settlement, she chose to take the issue to court. In 2023, the judge awarded her a fraction of that amount at $41 million. He also ordered that she cover her legal fees. Serene must have never heard the story of the greedy monkey who was trying to grab too many nuts out of the jar. It's crazy how, after 2,500 years, Aesop is still relevant. Number two, a swift scam. TikToker Marissa Lafada slammed SeatGeek, who she accused of scamming her out of Taylor Swift tickets. Listen to the story and then give your opinion. The influencer, known on TikTok as Marissa Bella, told her 900,000 followers about how she was scammed. However, according to SeatGeek, she didn't tell the whole story. Lafada purchased four tickets for Swift's Eras Tour from a woman on Facebook, and the seller transferred the $500 tickets to SeatGeek. Sites like StubHub and SeatGeek sold tickets to the highly anticipated Eras Tour for over $2,200 and scammers took full advantage of fans looking for cheap tickets. Lafada emailed SeatGeek after she accepted the tickets to confirm they were legitimate. When the site confirmed the seats were valid, she flew from Florida to New Jersey for the show, bringing her young children for the trip. When she arrived at the East Rutherford Arena, workers told her and her friends that someone had scammed them. Lafetta repeatedly called SeatGeek to see if they could give her and her friends other seats, even in the nosebleed section, to compensate for the situation. She claimed she called 50 times and that they repeatedly hung up or pretended they couldn't hear her. Lafada took to TikTok to broadcast her ordeal, claiming the website scammed her and threatened that it would get canceled. SeatGeek reached out to Lafada directly and offered her a $500 credit. She responded that there was nowhere to buy a ticket for that price on their website. Then they offered her $5,000, which still wouldn't cover four Taylor Swift tickets. In her rant, she said that the ticket provider kept offering less than they would need to buy new tickets, meaning they would still have to put in their own money if they wanted to go. Another ticket platform, TickPick, gave Lafada and her friends three 
three floor tickets for an upcoming show. She updated SeatGeek to say that TickPick gave her tickets, and SeatGeek responded that they could send her some too. LaFada demanded the $2,000 back she had paid for the original four tickets. With the publicity the incident received, SeatGeek made a statement where they clarified that LaFada bought the tickets through social media and not directly on their site. However, they did acknowledge that their customer service agent thought LaFada was a SeatGeek customer even though the tickets were fraudulent. So, who is at fault here? LaFada didn't buy the tickets through SeatGeek, but they did verify the validity of the ticket. Did she take enough reasonable steps to ensure she wasn't being scammed? Was SeatGeek actually responsible here? If you're enjoying this video, be sure to stay tuned right here for our past release to find out more bad decisions by influencers. Number 1. The Road Jump Out Christina Chambers, the wealthy wife of a Texas trader, tried to blame the road's conditions when she hit a pedestrian while driving intoxicated. After meeting on OkCupid, OK Joseph McMullen was on a first date with Brianna Iturino. It was a Tuesday night, although they initially discussed meeting on a Friday, as there was a karaoke event that Tuesday. To us, that sounds like a bad idea for a first date, since we definitely can't sing, but good on Joseph for diving in, right? The couple spent the evening singing karaoke and planned to end it at a nearby donut store. McMullen asked Iturino if she wanted to drive, but they decided to walk as it was a pleasant evening and their destination wasn't far. The two were walking on the sidewalk when they noticed a car flying down a narrow road. Although Ichirino contemplated hopping into the parking lot they walked alongside, everything happened too quickly to act. Christina Chambers was driving her Porsche so quickly that she missed an upcoming curve and hit McMullen. The force of the luxury car threw his body 30 feet from the wreckage. People came to McMullen's aid while Ichirino called 911, who told her to perform CPR as he had a very faint pulse at the time. When emergency crews arrived, passed away. Chambers hit a post and broke her leg and clavicle. She had a male passenger in the vehicle who didn't suffer any serious injuries. Officers arrested Chambers for driving under the influence. She arrived at her court date in a wheelchair, still recovering from the injury injuries she sustained in the crash. Her lawyer, Mark Thiessen, said she wasn't guilty because of the poor road conditions on Houston streets rather than the fact that she drove 100 miles per hour while intoxicated. You have to wonder how ridiculous he felt actually saying that after someone passed away. Although Chambers told the police that she drank one beer hours before the accident, she had four times the legal limit in her system at the time of the crash. They also found traces of Adderall and another illegal powdery stimulant. Thiessen stated that his client, who lived in a one and a half million dollar home, was unemployed and relied on her husband as her sole provider. Life must be rough for her. The judge set her bond at $50,000 and prohibited her from driving unless she got a job. She also had to install a landline at her home to ensure she abided by those conditions. These are easily some of the dumbest decisions influers make. Let's get started with number five, cold-blooded. Canadian influencer Yun Lucy Lu Lee and her Slovakian boyfriend Oliver Karafa were wanted for murder and attempted murder and spent three months on the run before they were caught by Hungarian police in Budapest. In February 2021, the couple shot 38-year-old father of three Tyler Pratt fatally in Ontario, Canada and tried to go after his pregnant girlfriend too. Pratt was pronounced dead at the scene, his girlfriend was hospitalized and lost her unborn baby. Within 24 hours, Lee and Karafa fled to Eastern Europe and traveled through Slovakia and Czech Republic before arriving in Hungary. But the couple made no attempt to conceal their identities, which is a great strategy when you're a social media star. Lee's mother, Hong Wei Winnie Liao, is the president of Respin International Group, an asset management firm based in Toronto with many political connections to Canada's Liberal Party. She runs in the same circles as Canadian Prime Minister and former party animal Justin Trudeau and Ontario Premier Doug Ford. Lee is one of a set of triplets and with her sisters had amassed a huge social media following by posing in their matching dresses and swimsuits. Her boyfriend Karafa is a Slovakian native who, in April 2012, was involved in a fatal car crash in which he drove drunk at twice the speed limit, resulting in the death of his passenger, 19-year-old David Chiang, after he was ejected from the vehicle. He was sentenced to five years in prison, which seems light if you ask us. The couple was arrested in Budapest after three months of being on the run. 
Lee consented to her extradition to Canada and was released on $2 million bail due to her mother's powerful political connections. Two family friends pledged $500,000 and $200,000, respectively, as sureties. The condition said that Lee must stay in her North York home for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, except for medical appointments and exercise. She was required to wear a GPS tracking device on her ankle and couldn't have any visitors outside of her immediate family. Lee could only access the internet when supervised. Harafa stayed in Hungary after losing his battle to be extradited to Canada. During the hearing, it was revealed that Harafa shot the fatal bullet resulting in Pratt's death. They were both charged with first-degree murder, meaning the murder was planned. But authorities haven't said why the couples met in the park that fatal night to begin with. Number 4. Snake Skinned Stephanie Scalaro is an Instagram rich kid and model from West London with over 100,000 followers. She often posted pictures of herself jet-setting around the world and having photo shoots in exotic places. You know, a real salt-of-the-earth type girl, born into a humble life as the daughter of Italian mining tycoon Francesco Scalaro. She often flies by private jet to her family's homes in Monaco, Ibiza, and New York, just like the rest of us. She's even cool with her dad only stocking Fiji water on the jet instead of Evian like she specifically asked. Sometimes life is hard, but you gotta roll with the punches, you know? Scalaro became the subject of an international customs investigation after a mysterious package came addressed to her from Indonesia. German Customs in Leipzig got a hold of the package containing illegal animal skins, mostly from Python. Customs notified British authorities and forwarded the package to the UK. British Customs found more packages connected to Scalaro's name, containing eight snakeskin baseball hats and another filled with other illegal animal skins. The packages were found at London Heathrow Airport in March 2017. Police arrested and interviewed Scalaro the same day in connection with said packages with two forged importation certificates inside. Scalaro defended herself by saying that she was the victim of the scam by Indonesian snake farmers because when are Indonesian snake farmers not targeting rich Instagram models? It's practically every day. Scalaro said had nothing to do with the packages or the illegal animal skins inside. She was probably hoping they would just ignore all the snake skin products she was selling on her website. There was clearly no connection. Authorities seized a total of 35 hats worth about 12,215 pounds and a large snake skin bag listed for 2,800 pounds on her website. Scalaro was accused of keeping Python leather their skins in her London apartment and selling them on her website SS Python, her Instagram account, a London boutique, and a menswear shop elsewhere in the UK. But we'd like to remind you, she was the one scam. The Indonesian snake skin trade is devious. Realizing that other people aren't stupid, Scalaro eventually admitted to two counts of importing goods with intent to evade prohibition and two counts of selling a species unlawfully imported. On January 21st of the following year, she was sentenced to a 12-month community order to conduct 160 hours of unpaid labor. The judge probably had to explain to her exactly what labor is, as she's probably never had to do any of it. During the sentencing, the judge pointed out Scalaro's blatantly entitled attitude. Not only was it evident on her Instagram page, but illegally importing products made with the skins of endangered animals, paying no mind to the fact that species are dying out for the sake of her profits. Still, Scalaro refused to take responsibility, claiming she was used as an advertising campaign because of her reputation and fame. Scalaro said she didn't know pythons were endangered or that importing the items to the UK was illegal, likely because she didn't care. Now she says she's being used as the poster child for wildlife crime and believes she's the victim of bullying. This was probably all part of the Indonesian snake farmer's master plan. After her sentencing and accepting her newfound reputation as a species killer, Scalaro just wants her followers to know that she's not perfect. You know, she's no different than any other average Joe who contributed to threatening an endangered population. So relatable. Number three, Sportlux Lies. Bianca Chi is an Australian former model turned wellness influencer. This health guru was born and raised in Australia until she moved to the United States in 2016 to pursue modeling. In the US, she married Simon Chalmers, an American who rang King's Cross nightclub Beach House. Chalmers' nightclub is frequented by many celebrities, such as Leonardo DiCaprio, who held his 37th birthday bash there. Chalmers helped Chi expand her wellness business by taking her knowledge to social media and accumulating more than 1.3 
million Instagram followers. She and her husband founded the website Sportslux, a digital wellness brand devoted to helping people find the joy in healthy eating. The couple was enjoying marriage and success when in January 2022, she was detained by the Australian Border Force after taking a transcontinental flight from Los Angeles to Sydney. But the arrest didn't come as a surprise. She knew authorities were waiting for her on the other side before being taken into custody by New South Wales police. Chalmers gave potential Sportlux investors documents that said the company earned $200,000 in the first half of 2017, with a projected $325,000 profit in the rest of the year. Convinced by the company's revenue figures, investors bought 1 million AUD worth of shares. But they became suspicious that Chi's stats were fraudulent. NSW police launched a fraud investigation in 2018 and found that the couple broke Australian law by deceiving consumers and duping investors out of 1 million AUD. Investigators found that Chi put some of her profits from modeling into the Sportlux business account to make it look like the company was more successful than it really was. They were ordered to pay back all of the money they stole from investors, but Chi declared bankruptcy in 2021 and hasn't paid back a single dollar. The couple's lawyers walked away from the case after Chi and Chalmers said they only make $500 per month now and can't afford a defense team. Chi fled to the U.S. to escape the Australian justice system, even though a Sportlux spokesperson insists that she went with innocent intention of expanding the Sportlux market. Amidst the investigations and lawsuits, Chi and Chalmers separated. She took to Instagram to explain her lack of recent posting, saying that she wanted to spend more time with her son, never addressing the charges against her. Number two, pink haired. Chosen Terrell Hanna is a young TikTok star from Detroit known as Chosen World who recorded himself dancing and lip-syncing shirtless in his signature red and white Nike shoes. In about half of his videos, Terrell Hanna has pink-purple hair. His TikTok page has more than 149,000 followers and 1.6 million likes where he bragged about robbing gas stations and 7-Elevens in a three-month crime spree. It's always best to brag about crime sprees on social media as a way to hide in plain sight. Police will never find you this way. Chosen's TikTok, shockingly, is what ultimately gave him away to police. Authorities recognize his red and white sneakers as the ones worn by the suspect in a Michigan crime spree. Eyewitnesses also mentioned the suspect's pink purple hair, which matched Terrell Hanna's physical description. Terrell Hanna began his spree of four armed robberies in December 2021, in which he targeted a 7-Eleven twice, a gas station, and a tobacco shop. During his first heist at the 7-Eleven, he walked into the building in black pants, a black hoodie, black ski mask, skeleton gloves, white shoes, and a backpack with pink flowers on it for a pop of color. Gotta look good. Terrell Hanna held the store clerk at gunpoint and demanded cash. The next month, he walked into a marathon gas station wearing the same disguise and this time held the gun against the clerk's back as he demanded money. Then he returned to the same 7-Eleven and got away with the heist for a second time. To make matters worse, he didn't even do a cool dance as he left. His final robbery took place just five days later at Old West Tobacco in Novi, where he emptied the cash register and jacked several boxes of cigars. The employee of the tobacco shop noticed the suspect's distinctive pink hair. The FBI received an anonymous tip pointing them to Terrell Hanna's TikTok page, and they noticed his sneakers and hair matched the eyewitness's account. The police obtained a search warrant that allowed them to track Chosen's phone, which showed his device at all of the robbery locations at the same times as the incidents. Investigators raided his home and seized several items probably used in the robberies, including a handgun, backpack with pink flower on it, and a signature Nike tennis shoes with red accents. Authorities read Terrell Hanna's his Miranda rights and he TikTok right away confessing to all four robberies. He was charged with affecting interstate commerce and possessing a firearm during a violent crime. He was held without bond and could face more than 20 years in prison. Number one, Canyon golfing? Female golfer and social media influencer Katie Sigmund found herself in hot water after posting a viral video of her swinging a golf ball into the Grand Canyon in October 2022. Sigmund, who has nearly 7 million followers on TikTok, was quickly reported to the National Park Service after the stunt. The park released a statement asking if they really needed to tell visitors not to hit balls into the Grand Canyon and posted the video to their Reddit page. They didn't identify her by name, but she was quickly recognized as social media influencer and terrible golfer and 
and now Litterbug, Katie Sigmund. In the video, Sigmund is seen swinging her golf club at the ball. The ball goes flying into the canyon, and the club breaks in half and goes down into the rim as well. Sigmund looks shocked as she realizes what happened. The force of the impact of the ball and the club falling down the canyon could have been enough to kill someone. The incident took place near Mather Point in the Grand Canyon. It went beyond littering. It was downright dangerous. Commenters on the video expressed hope that she would be banned from the park for life, with others worrying that she could have hit someone's head or damaged the wildlife. Sigmund has been fined $285 and charged with three misdemeanors. The charges were for tossing items into the Grand Canyon, littering, and creating hazardous conditions with disorderly conduct. Sigmund was lucky to only be cited for disorderly conduct and throwing items into the canyon, since that carries a maximum fine of $5,000 and six months in prison. Maybe you stick to mini golf from now on, Katie, or pumpkin bowling, or something. Just not hitting things at really any type of canyon, grand or otherwise. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section what you'd rather get rid of, all the social media platforms or all the scammers in the world.